our currency, which is what the Obama plan might do. If we have hyperinflation, it's not going to matter how much money we have because we're not going to be able to buy anything with it. Well, Adrian, when you print gigantic amounts of money and you flood the world with money, throughout history, that has led to inflation. If you're worried about $4 a gallon of gasoline, you better worry about $8 a gallon of gasoline. Uh, the problem is we have a printing press. We can pay our debts by printing money. People think that Hyperinflation can't happen here. Well, you know, the laws of physics works everywhere. If you throw a ball up in the air in Zimbabwe, gravity is going to bring it back down. You can't print money, phantom money out of thin air based on nothing and producing practically nothing without causing the dollar to devalue dramatically. That's not deflation, that's temporary. Quantitative easing is inflation. But they're going to blow us all up. So my question to you is, will you tell the American people to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars, will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? No. Inflation, simply explained, is the printing of money. Inflation is the value of the money in your pocket going down while prices all around you rise. When gas prices rise, when your grocery bills go up, this is a symptom of inflation. The Federal Reserve is printing money out of thin air every day. If you have money in the bank, that money is decreasing in value. In other words, we should all be worried about inflation because it affects the prices of everything you use on a daily basis. There have been good men warning us for years about inflation. Jim Rogers, Peter Schiff, Mark Faber, Ron Paul, and many others. They have spoken about the uncontrollable spending that will lead to the total collapse of the United States. And then there have been those in power who have ignored the warnings. George W. Bush, Ben Bernanke, Timothy Geithner, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi and all of Congress. We will show you how these individuals through stimulus plans, bailouts, low interest rates and the ever-expanding balance sheet of the Federal Reserve will lead to the destruction of the US currency. We owe the world probably as much if not more than Germany owed, only we didn't incur this debt fighting a war, we incurred it remodeling our houses and buying cars and television sets and, and iPods and all these little gadgets that we didn't need, and now we owe the world trillions and we're reaching for the printing press to pay it back. Never before in world history were people able to buy houses with no money down. Many people bought four or five houses with no money down and no job, and then they did it with cars and student loans and credit card loans. You think we just say, well, that's too bad, we're going to start over, nobody loses his job? Be realistic. We have to realize that the monetary base, the liquidity was doubled in a few short months. To me, there's a lot of inflation out there. It's already inflated. We're in the midst of inflation because the prices haven't gone up. doesn't mean we don't have the distortion. And it was, it was that system that gave us the financial bubble, the artificially low interest rates, the malinvestment, all the mistakes made. And now we're trying to correct all that by doing the very, very same thing. This system that we've had since 1971 is non-viable and it's coming to an end. That's what this whole story is about. Bush's $152 billion Economic Stimulus Act of 2008 sent $300 to $600 checks to individuals and $600 to $1,200 checks to married couples. When the checks started to arrive, oil prices surged to $147 per barrel. Americans needed the checks just to buy gas. Obama is taking Bush's mistakes and making them bigger. While Bush's stimulus was a direct injection of inflation, Obama's will take a while to work its way through the system, as pork projects will take years to be completed, but the long-term effects will be many times worse.
the Obama budget deficits, I mean, they dwarf anything that, uh, that Bush had. I mean, it's ironic that Obama is now trying to criticize Bush for running up the deficit as he's running it up through the roof, $2 trillion uh, in his first term. And he's saying, well, I'm going to cut it in half by my last year. Well, even if he's right, it's still going to be a trillion when he cuts it in half. It's still more than twice uh, the last budget deficit from, from Bush. The dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. Mark my words. This was given to me by them. It is prediction. Put it down. And whenever it does, what's going to happen to those billions and billions of dollars, maybe in some cases trillions of dollars, worth of T-bills and Federal Reserve issues that have been sold to the oil-producing countries according to the deal that was cut by Kissinger in 77 through 81? What will happen to that paper? Please remember the previous show that I was on with Alex Jones. I was told if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. This should be a classical statement because it was told to me by Mr. Brom before he died. Chaplin, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And when the Muslim Brotherhood, supported today by the elite of the world, continue to cause conflict all over the Middle East as they have in Egypt and in Libya, and it will spread from one country to the other, mark my words, none of them will be exempt, and when it does, the oil will not be supplied from over there, the dollar, because when oil goes to $200 a barrel, the American economy is going to be so drastically affected, you think we have problems now financially, the dollar will collapse toward the end of 2012, and when it does, all of the paper, please, Folks, hear this, especially Arabs out there. The dollar collapses. The paper of the Federal Reserve will likewise do the same. And when it does, the double cross of the Arabs, which was started way back in 77, the double cross of the Arab world will take place. They will be so angry with us. 